Greetings, you guys, from Lexington, Kentucky, the horse capital of the world. I am here visiting family with my daughter, Vesper, and I thought you guys might enjoy checking out the Kentucky Horse Park with me. Um, we've got draft horses, you guys. We've got mounted police horses that are draft crosses. We have million dollar winning standard breads. We have some unique breeds. We've got a Smithsonian affiliated museum that's got some wacky stuff. And of course I zeroed in on the draft horse stuff. Um, and even more interesting, I got a chance to chat with a few people that worked at the park and learn some really interesting things that you guys might enjoy. So stay tuned. So if you get a chance to visit the Kentucky Horse Park, I definitely recommend showing up when they open. The reason for this is that you can head on over to the big draft barn, and that's where you'll get to meet all the draft horses. And usually earlier in the day, they're pulling them out and they're getting them tacked up for the trolley rides. So you get a chance to interact with them up close and personal and talk to the people that handle them and work with them on a daily basis. The largest horse that they have there is a Belgian named Chase. He is 19 one hands high, about 2000 pounds, and he is a big, big boy. Oh my goodness. They also have a beautiful Shire who has the whitest feathers that I have ever seen. And I got a chance to talk to the gentleman that gives the trolley tours as he was getting them ready and tacked up. And I was like, yeah, do you guys use a lot of purple shampoo? And he was saying that they actually utilize Castile soap and that that has worked really well for them. And uh, the purple shampoo, from my experience, can kind of dry out their skin a little bit. So I was really impressed that they were keeping their feathers so white with just the Castile soap. They have a harness room that has all of the tack for each of the draft horses on the wall. I mean, these things are enormous. It was super cool to be able to see all that stuff. And then I had a, a chance to ask the gentleman if he had an opinion on draft horse breeds. You know, I, I know a lot of you guys are interested in a draft and you're wondering, well, what about a Suffolk Punch? Or what about a Shire? Or what about a Belgian? What about a Percheron? And in his opinion, they're all pretty much great chill horses. He didn't really have a strong opinion either way about one breed over another. The trolley ride is also a lot of fun and it runs twice a day, so I recommend doing that as well. The draft horses are actually all housed in an enormous barn and they will tell you on the tour that it is the third largest wooden barn in North America. So you have to be inside it to believe it, but it is definitely massive. So one of my favorite things about the Kentucky Horse Park is the Parade of Breeds show. And this is your chance to kind of get up close and personal with some really kind of rare and obscure horse breeds. And they have different breeds performing in the show on different days, as well as different breeds that they're showcasing in the stalls surrounding the arena. Your admission will cover two days, and if you have the chance to go both days, I definitely recommend it if you're interested in seeing more breeds. They had a couple of breeds that I had never seen before, one of which was a Bashker Curly Horse, so that was a cool experience. And then the other was a Marsh Tacky Horse, which I had never even heard of before. Um, Leave me a comment down below if you've heard of a Marsh Tacky Horse. The Pasofino is a gated horse, and my friends who ride gated horses who've had Pasofinos say that they are among their favorite of the gated horse breeds and that they're incredibly smooth. And I guess they have three specific gates, which I can't remember off the top of my head, but I will put them on the screen right here. And it was a trip to watch this horse move. I got a chance to talk to the rider afterward because I had heard from a gated trainer that I have taken a lesson with. She also has a YouTube channel, by the way, and I'll put it down in the description. Um, that you need to be on their mouths a lot when you ride a gated horse, that you aren't actually using a slack rein. And I asked her, was this your experience riding those the gated breeds that they have at the park? And she said, yeah, actually, you really have to support their head quite a bit with your reins, and you do have a lot of contact with their mouths. She actually said she doesn't use her leg very much at all. And I thought that was really interesting because as someone that grew up I'm taking lessons on quarter horses and thoroughbreds. And of course, now I have a draft. Um, I'm used to being told to get off of their mouth and to be very, very gentle and light on the reins. And in this case, it was kind of the opposite. Um, so she said that they're really fun to ride, incredibly smooth, and it is a little bit of a learning curve getting used to that difference. The Fjord horse was a total sweetie. Uh, I love how stocky and short he was. 
And when I got a chance to talk to the rider of the fjord, we were mostly just chatting about what it's like to own a horse in different parts of the country. She was from Montana. She had moved to Lexington and she was really happy about living here. And I was asking her how much it costs to board a horse here because being from California, everything is crazy expensive. And she said that unfortunately the board prices are very similar to where I am because it's such a posh area um, and there's a lot of training barns. And so if you're looking to just be kind of a casual horse boarder and you don't want to spend thousands of dollars a month because your horse is not a hunter jumper or it's not a racehorse, um, it's actually not as inexpensive as at least I hope. I was very excited to visit the Mounted Police Barn. So the Kentucky Horse Park is actually 1,200 acres, so it's huge. They have not only the park itself, but they also have campgrounds, so you can actually camp at the Kentucky Horse Park. And then they also host a ton of events. They've got the Alltech Arena, they've got a covered arena, they've got a stadium. Um, they can house 1,200 horses on property in permanent stalls, and then they can even set up additional stalls if they have more horses for events. When I was there, they had the National Horse Show going on uh, for hunter jumpers, as well as the Mounted Games had a competition happening. And that was just one weekend. Given that they have a million people coming through there every year, it makes sense that they have their own mounted police force. So they are operational 24 seven, seven days a week. And the entire mounted police force equestrian unit is all draft crosses. <laughs> so I was like, yes, not only that you guys, but they have two drum horses. So I was extra stoked about that. I got a chance to talk to the officer who rides and cares for Turk, who is one of the drum horses and ask him what he thought about drums as a mount and as part of the unit. And he said that he's been very impressed with this horse, um, that he's been very solid, a, a real joy to ride. I guess Turk has a background in dressage and that has made riding him even more of a joy. And recently they had an event where there was a lot going on and Turk was leading the charge. He was ahead of the other horses, very calm, very steady. And the officer said that he's just been a wonderful horse to have. One thing that's really interesting about the way the Kentucky Horse Park operates is a lot of the horses are there on a lease. So the Kentucky Horse Park doesn't actually own a lot of the horses that are on the property. Um, the horses are basically there for a little while to be breed ambassadors and to live out their retirement with purpose and bringing joy to the public. And so the Kentucky Horse Park will have these horses on lease for a period of time. So I got a chance to learn a little bit about standard breads, which I didn't know anything about before. Um, they tend to compete uh, more often than thoroughbreds, so sometimes on like a weekly basis, and they tend to have longer careers than thoroughbreds do. Thoroughbreds tend to have their careers in, you know, two, three, four years old, whereas standard breads can compete much later in life. Um, she mentioned that they tend to be bred a little bit sturdier and a little bit hardier uh, and was touting them as lovely family horses, which I did not expect. Apparently also to the Amish have really caught on to standard breds and a lot of the horses that pull the carts for the Amish are standard breds. So it was really interesting. If you happen to know a little bit about standard breds or have experience with them, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. But the combined winnings of the horses that they show you in these Hall of Champions show, they also have a former Derby winner, is something like $20 million. Now, if you're not typically a museum person, you will still want to check out the International Museum of the Horse. Not only are there some pretty incredible uh, bronze statues in the museum and throughout the park, but there are also some really interesting things that you can learn about the history of horses. One of the things that really stuck out to me was they had an exhibit uh, showing horses during World War I and how millions of horses died during that war because that was a war where we were still using horses in warfare. And apparently the U.S. exported uh, a number of horses to Europe, most of whom were slaughtered and killed. They had a horse ambulance on the battlefield, just like they did for the soldiers. And the populations of horses in the United States dwindled significantly due to the war. I also thought it was fun to see a lot of the old equipment that was used for horses, 
um, saddles, carriages. Uh, they even had a display of costumes from some of the derby parties that happened over the years. They have a beautiful exhibition specifically for Arabians. So if Arabians are your thing, you will definitely love learning about the history of that breed and the relationship they had with the Bedouins. And of course, I was very happy to see that they had a small section of the museum dedicated to draft horses. They also have an American Saddlebred Museum, which unfortunately I did not have the time to check out, um, but maybe next trip. Either way, spending time at the Kentucky Horse Park has been a highlight of this trip, and I would definitely recommend a visit if you're ever in the area. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.